Dan McCauley from Cosmo Music here with Mark Seo. Taylor Guitars at NAMM 2017. Uh, about to talk about uh, a new item, the GS Mini Bass. Yeah, check this thing out, it's our new GS Mini Bass. And the idea behind this was we wanted to create something for that often forgotten musician, the bass player, right? Mm -hmm. you know, we, we were talking, we laughed, we talked a lot about the fact that you never go to a campfire and have a bass player sitting around with you jamming, right? right? right. You know, the bass being a bigger instrument or in need of ampli uh, amplification makes it a little more prohibitive. So we thought, well, let's make a bass that bass players are really good behind for a couch bass, for a rehearsal bass, and a bass that can go on stage, because these GS Mini basses do have electronics, so you can plug it in, play live. Right. Sounds great. So for a bass player, they want to practice on the couch, they want to be in vocal rehearsals backstage or at a campfire, they can now be included, uh, but also have something that sounds great from the stage. Right. Another person we designed this bass for really was guitar players. As you know, at Cosmo Music, you guys sell a lot of recording software. How many guitar players are now recording themselves? And a lot of times, guitar players are not well versed on a bass. So here's a bass that feels comfortable. Gotcha. It's built on our GS Mini chassis, so it feels more like a guitar to a lot of guitar players. So if they're making their own tracks and they want to throw it on a bass line now, it makes it a little, a little bit easier for them to do so. Right. And then finally, we think about kids, kind of in keeping in step with our Academy series. I was talking to Andy Powers last week at a meeting that we were getting ready for NAMM, and he was telling me, he says, you know, if you really think about it, this, the argument could be made that our bass might be the best single instrument to start a musician on for a string fretted instrument. Sure. And he was explaining that when you play a bass and you're playing the root notes, you're really playing the absolute minimal part, of, you know, the, the basic part of a song. You're playing one note at a time, and you're learning basic rhythm. So it's kind of an, an easy entry level for a, a, any musician. And the thing that was interesting in talking with Andy also, and I think this is your uh, viewers will find this interesting, the challenges it took to make this instrument were pretty gnarly. You know, it was, yeah. it was a pretty a pretty big challenge, and that there were three things that have to happen. First off, you can't just go buy a set of strings for this bass. It's, sure. it's short scale. You needed the right weight, the right materials in the string. So we partnered with Diodario, and we came up with a nylon core, bronze wrapped. Uh, dipped in their EXP coating. Right. And what that does is it allows the string to last longer, but the nylon gives it a much slinkier feel and it gives it a great tone with the bronze. So all those things kind of together, it was really the sum of its parts that made the string work really well with this instrument. Uh, the second hurdle we had to come up with was these bridge pins. We needed a way to get the string to break at a less angle because they're big, thick bass strings. You can't just do a 90 degree angle over right. the saddle. So Andy invented this dual pronged bridge pin. It looks like a little fork, it's really cool. You push the string in, push the fork down, and it pushes the string more to the back of the guitar, which makes that angle significantly less steep, which works ideal for keeping the energy transfer onto the strings and those types of things. But then the really cool part about it was as you tighten the string, the little pins kind of go apart and it locks it in place. So it's right. the exact tension it needs to right. lock the string in place. Sure. Really clever. Yeah. In fact, so much so we got a patent on it and you know, I'm sure we'll see more of that technology somewhere down the road. The final phase here was this. When you have a bigger bass string, you need a bigger post to wrap it around. Problem with a bigger post is you typically have way bigger winders and that would make the guitar top heavy and not look right. So we worked with one of our tuning key manufacturers to come up with a bigger post with a normal machine head which aesthetically makes the bass look fantastic, but it also tunes perfectly. And it's just a really comfortable little bass to play. When I play it, even in a room full of people with some noise, right? a lot of punch, a lot of bass out of it. And so I think people are gonna find this to be uh, just an incredible instrument. My little side note was when I was in that meeting I was telling you about last week, and, you know, we had marketing guys in there, and I probably should have been a little more respectful, but Andy hands me the bass. I couldn't stop playing. I was interrupting everybody and driving everybody nuts because I didn't want to put it down. So when you go into Cosmo Music and you try this thing out, give yourself a little bit of time because you're going to want to sit and play around with a little yeah, bit. It, it's surprisingly resonant, right? Like, it, you, you can hear it. No trouble whether it's amplified or not. Right? Absolutely true, yeah. Playing with other guitar players acoustically, we did some jams this morning as we were setting up, and it really cuts. It's, yeah. it's really neat. And when you plug it in, it sounds fantastic as well. The other cool thing, I don't know if I mentioned, but it does come with a gig bag also, so a really nice soft shell case, and these will be available, I think, right after March. Okay. Great. Thanks again, Mark. Course, and thank you to everyone out there at Taylor Guitars, NAMM 2017.